everyone. It's another wonderful day in the Lord Jesus. Every day is a blessing when we set our eyes on the Lord. Today I want to talk about the parable spoken of in Luke 15. It's in Luke 15 that we see how the prodigal son returns home to his father. And I just realized that this event occurs in a very interesting season. It was in the time of famine that the prodigal son returns. So the season of famine is a very valuable time. It's a powerful time. Biblically, it has proven to be a time of shifts and changes because it's a time when dependency on the Lord increases dramatically. Famine is also a time of unusual miracles. Bear in mind how God used Joseph to help the people of Egypt thrive during the famine. And then you have Elijah. He prospers the widow of Zarephath in the season of famine. So the season of famine draws in many treasures. And I want to bring your attention to it because you may have heard the rumors of food and energy shortages amidst all the political turmoil we have been going through. And we may indeed be approaching a season of famine in the US and in Europe. The very idea strikes fear amongst the masses. However, as a believer in Christ, we understand the depths of this season and what a blessing it can be when you know the purpose for the time of famine and recognize the role it serves in history, then this helps us actually go through the season and further to thrive in it. Biblically, in times of famine, we see great moves of God. But in this video, I want to bring your attention to how the famine is the time when our Father in Heaven actually receives the most wonderful gift. And for this reason alone, we should be pleased for the season. A time of famine is a profound opportunity for those who have strayed to now return to God. So let's talk about the prodigal son. The prodigal son. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants." And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet 
and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be merry now his oldest son was in the field and as he came and drew near to the house he heard music and dancing so he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant and he said to him your brother has come and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with the harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. The prodigal son asked his good, kind, and generous father for his portion. And then he takes it. He leaves his father. He squanders it on ungodly and unholy living. And he ends up completely reduced to nothing. He even gets to a point where he's taking care of pigs and he's contemplating eating the pig's food to survive. And then he remembers at this point how well his father's servants are doing. And his heart is deeply convicted and he longs to return to his father and he's so deeply changed by all of this that he's even willing to be treated as a hired servant so we see how much he has transformed through this humbling process and then he returns to his father to his father's utter delight the father throws him a great feast and then we see the older son who has been working returns home and he sees the celebrations and the dancing and he is envious but the father has to correct his attitude and reveal to the oldest son that something wonderful has happened and it must be celebrated. So the focus in this season is on the prodigal son. The focus is not on the mature, older, obedient son. In the time of famine, we focus on the return of the prodigal son. Remember that the prodigal son, when he strayed, he lived a very reckless life, an unholy life. He wasted his inheritance and he lived for pleasure alone. He was living selfishly with prostitutes and harlots and his immorality ended up breaking him and stripping him of all that he had. In fact, he was brought so low that he was reduced to the lowliest of jobs and he contemplates eating pig's food. That the pig in Israel is considered an unclean animal especially in ancient biblical times so to even consider eating the food of this unclean animal shows that he had reached the very rock bottom he lost everything he lost his money he lost his good name he lost his reputation he has no shame he was a complete mess and even the world gave up on him and was punishing him but God never gives up on his children. This is the mercy and grace of God. And we see how the father is so delighted with his son's return. There is no ill feeling. There is no recollection of his past. The father doesn't bring up any shame for his past mistakes. Instead, the father's heart is filled with love and he's brimming with excitement and a wonderful desire to celebrate. And so he throws a great feast, even sacrificing the fatted calf, which reveals how important an occasion this is. Isn't it beautiful how even when he was a great way off, his father sees him from a distance and runs to him, falls on his neck and kisses him. Look at the father's joy here. 
Look at his unrestrained response, wanting to celebrate the occasion with wild abandon, wanting to dress his prodigal son with robes and rings and the very finest because the father's deepest desire had now come to fruition. His son had returned to him. And all the father wanted to do was bless him and bless him and bless him some more. <laughs> How generous he is. So we bear this in mind when we consider the time of famine. Knowing biblically what the season promises, we look forward with expectation for the return of the prodigal son. And I myself have begun to look at it with new eyes, with expectation, because knowing that this is a season that is an opportunity for wayward children to return, it is so worth it to endure. Now, of course, I'm not thrilled about rising grocery prices. I'm not thrilled about a potential food shortage. I love food. Why would I want to go through a food shortage, a famine, so to speak? But you see, the worries of the world should not captivate our attention. We have to guard our thoughts and we have to fixate instead on the unseen promises of this time rather than the seen troubles and challenges. I would rather not go through a season of famine. However, knowing what his word shows us, we see how necessary it is. I don't have any fear around a potential season of famine. I actually feel expectation because it's a time of shifts. And if I need to eat very simply in this season and practice a semi-fasted lifestyle for an extended time, then so be it. There are certain things we have to endure so that the prodigal son has the opportunity to reflect, humble himself and thus return. If it really does get to a point that we're surviving on things like chia seeds and canned food, then we just have to make the most of what we have and make it taste good. <laughs> Fortunately, I love chia pudding. I take it with coconut sugar and some honey. It's delicious. Anyway, okay. Anyway, like Paul, we are to rejoice whether we are abounding or are being abased. Philippians 4.12 I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. So we endure the season of famine with joy for the sake of the prodigal son. I think we're all aware that the enemy's goal is to cause men to live in fear. So the enemy deliberately conjures events and also releases news that will strike fear and worry and limitation. Whether it's news of viruses or food shortages, it clouds what's really happening. The remnant is actually being poised to return. And we, as believers in Christ, we have nothing to fear as long as we remain surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Prince of Peace. And so we have a job in this time of famine to remain in His peace because we have to play a role as being a source of comfort to others. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. As believers, we train ourselves not to respond or react with fear or panic or anxiety. Instead, we respond by stirring our faith to rise to the occasion as overcomers in Christ because this is our destiny. We are designed to overcome. And remember, this is just a season. It's just for a time. Eventually, it comes to an end. And I do want to point out that the Word of God shows us that the righteous thrive 
in famine. Look at the tree in Jeremiah 17, 8, whose leaves remain green in every season. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. This is another role that we are called to play in times of famine. Notice that though it was a time of famine, the father and his workers and his older righteous son were untouched and they were still thriving. They did not cease from yielding fruit. In fact, the oldest son in Luke 15 was busy working when he heard the, the sounds of the celebration. And we see that the father's servants were eating very well. So as long as we are with our Heavenly Father, we're close to Him, then we will be bearing fruit. We will never go hungry. We may be tested, yes, but we will always be taken care of. God does not cease from taking care of His obedient children. I also want to encourage you to guard yourself against conversation with people who are fearful of a time of famine. So guard what you hear, guard what you say. Don't feed into this fear. Bring in hope, bring in faith, because it's very easy to fall into casual conversation where you just repeat the news. And I remind myself of this too. A time of famine is a powerful season. Yes, our days are going to look different. However, the righteous live by faith. And we have to leave room for the Lord to surprise us in this time. A famine attracts uncommon miracles. And the entire paradigm changes in the season where we have to depend on the immaterial rather than the material, the unseen rather than the seen to a greater measure. As believers in Christ, we live in the Spirit. In fact, the Gospels show us that the believer in Christ moves like the wind. There's an unseen element. And so the element of surprise as well is an integral part of our walk in Christ. This is what I've seen over the years. And in times of famine, now we have no choice but to depend on the miraculous and allow the Lord to move in unusual ways because it's a season of pressing where we see the hand of God supplying, whether it's a supernatural miracle, for example, food multiplication or being fed by birds or by angels as Elijah was, or it's a miracle where hearts or strangers may be touched and moved and physical supplies are given in unexpected ways. So the Lord will very often move in a completely uncharted fashion and we have to learn to relax and rest in him and trust him we can only really rest in him when we are willing to not know all the details of how this miracle will come about we have no idea how he will do it but we know he will do it like innocent children we trust him and we lean not on our own understanding. The Word of God promises that He supplies, He takes care of us. Even if we have to wait a while, He will eventually supply the faithful. This has always been my experience. I have never been disappointed. He has taught me patience. He has taught me endurance. He's also taught me to trust Him even when it seems it's taking a long while. What I love about the way the Lord works is there's always an element of astonishment and surprise that keeps you in the state of awe and wonder. There's nothing to engineer. We live by faith that He's a loving God whom we can trust in all seasons. In Luke 15, there was a famine in the physical world and those who were living unrighteous lives apart from the Father experienced the hardship of the famine. The famine affected the land, but the father, 
his obedient, righteous son, and his workers were not only unaffected, but they were thriving. They even had a fatted calf. The fatted calf was usually a religious offering that would be given as a sacrifice. In ancient times, the animals that were provided for public feasts were first sacrificed to God. So the fatted calf has a messianic reference. And also amongst Abraham's ancestors, the fatted calf was sacrificed to seal covenants and agreements. So you see that this celebration where the fatted calf is offered seems to be a picture of a Eucharistic celebration. When you're living righteously, the grace of God ensures that you are taken care of. So famine is not a time to be afraid of. It's a time to stir our faith. It's a time to be willing to be tested. It's a time to learn endurance. It's a time to learn patience. It's a time that teaches us to remain in peace, to endure a temporary season of affliction so that we can afford an opportunity for the prodigal son to return. For this reason alone, I think famine truly can be such a marvelous time. Our Father in Heaven is so generous to us. He gives us so much. He does so much for His children. And we should now afford Him this time so that His children who have strayed can now come back and return to Him. It brings Him such joy. And we should not be like the oldest son who was murmuring and complaining. The oldest son's focus was not on the prodigal son's return. The oldest son's focus was on himself and how he had been serving his father. And yet the prodigal son, he had been sinning all this while. But, and indeed, the scripture shows us that the prodigal son had been working with a citizen outside his father's house. You could say that he was yoked with a secular worldly individual you could even see this as being yoked with the kingdom of darkness nonetheless in luke 15 we see despite what he went through and what he yoked himself with the father is overjoyed when the prodigal son returns at this time we should be praying and interceding not so much for the famine to end, but for the purpose of the season to be accomplished. When the purposes are accomplished, then the season ends. We pray for God's will to be done and for His wayward children to come back, to realize that they went on the wrong path and it's time to return home. And when they return, we join in the celebration with grace and mercy, forgetting the wild past, forgetting the error of their ways because some have truly sinned terribly. And so have I in my past before I came to the Lord. It's in this season where our Father in Heaven has so much to gain and He, and he has such an expectation. Knowing that our Father in Heaven stands to receive so much in this season, we too should be standing in expectation. What is regarded as a brutal time, a harsh time. No one wants to go through a famine. Yet, look at what's occurring. Really, it's a season of joy for the Lord because He's receiving the greatest gift of all. I see the season of famine almost as being Christmas for the Lord because He gets the ultimate gift, the return of His long lost children. So we look at the season with the mind of Christ. God has been so kind to us. He's an excellent father, more than excellent. And I want our Father in heaven to receive magnificent gifts as well. And it's worth it to go through this. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Are you willing to go through a temporary trial so that the Lord can see the return of the prodigal son. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment, like this video, 
Love you. Shalom. And I'll see you soon. Yeshua is Lord. King of Kings.